Hello. This was one of my favourite books when I was a kid. I was a crafty kid, it should be no surprise, and I liked to reuse things and recycle things, and, and this was like the perfect book for that. And I credit this book with giving me that mindset that says things can be reused and recycled and made into something different. So this book has done me a large favour in my life. I have not really looked at it, or I had not really looked at it since I was a kid. It's been on the shelf, just sitting, literally gathering dust. And I thought to myself, I was walking past the bookshelf, and I thought, that would be an interesting video series for me to do. I don't know how you guys would feel about it, but it'd be interesting for me to do. Um, so I took it off the shelf and thought, this is the time now I can get these supplies that I can make all of the projects in this book that I desperately wanted to make when I was a child. And I will say I wanted to make all 194 things in this book. And I flicked through it and realized the 1970s were a fever dream. Some of these projects still work. Some of them would still work today. You'd probably decorate them differently or, or do them slightly differently so that they're not quite so 1970s. But a lot of it still works. But there are quite a few things in here that are frankly worrying. And I'm worried about the person who came up with them as projects. So today I'm going to take you through some of the Fever Dream projects in this book. And you will see why I have abandoned my plan to make all 194 projects in this book. I might still make some of these, and there are things that I did make as a kid, um, but some of this is nonsense. Some of this is worrying nonsense. So let's have a look at some worrying nonsense together. Now we're not going to go through the whole book because we'd be here all day, but I'm going to show you some of the highlights of treasures from throwaways. I would ask you if you were ready, but you're not. The thing that really gets me about a lot of these is that you need some very specific supplies, and I don't know how common they were in the 1970s in the United States, but I haven't seen things kicking around here for a while. So, I mean, it starts off okay. Coffee table covered in tins, lovely. Tennis tube, tennis tube? Tennis ball tubes made into vases with graphic ladies on them, if that's the sort of thing that you want to do. Uh, hanging planters, all of that. Uh, a Humpty Dumpty made out of a five pound ham tin. That's the sort of thing that you, I mean, a totem pole, we're not going to discuss that. But then it gets to stuff where you need a lot of supplies and a lot of very specific supplies. Like, for example, this Christmas tree that requires 250 tin cans and 61 red votive candles. I don't know how long it would take me to acquire 250 tin cans. I mean, I like it. It is something that I might make, but I just, I don't know how I can get that many cans in one place. So uh, that's on the to-do list at some point in the future. But then we start getting, I mean, this, for example, I desperately wanted, I'll show you that a bit closer up. This is doll's house furniture. And as a child, I wasn't permitted to use tin snips for some reason. So it's got all the diagrams on how to make the doll's house furniture. It's all cut up Coke tins. And I would beg my parents to make these for me. And they would always refuse. And since I wasn't allowed the tins, I mean, I could go ahead and do that now. But I'm probably not going to, if we're honest. Okay, now we're going to get into the specific supplies required. So for this, you need some big packing barrels, which you can acquire from, I'm reading this upside down. Um, you need three packing barrels with lids, 30 inches high and 18 inches in diameter. But you also need one of three of these big calendar pages. Where are you getting three of these big calendar pages? Were these really common in the 70s? I don't remember the 70s, so somebody's going to have to tell me. So that is, I mean, you could do it with paint if you wanted to. This is an interesting way to display your record player in a big tube. And again, you're going to need some big packing packing crates that are round. Big round cracking... <laughs> big round packing crates. <laughs> oh, sometimes the words don't work. For this one, you take an entire piano and you gut it and you paint it white and fill it with plants. That's what you do for that one. Maybe don't do that. But we're getting closer to one that's really kind of visually um, distressing for me. Oh, actually, we'll get to this one first. This, I dreamed of this when I was a child. I desperately wanted a wardrobe with this kind of graphic. This is a wallpaper graphic, so you don't have to paint it on. I don't know that they still do big wall panel graphics like this. They might do. But now that I look at it as an adult, she looks kind of unwell. I'm just going to say. I mean, I know it was the 70s, but still, she's not well. But we are getting closer to something upsetting, and I want you to be ready for it. 
this is, I mean, this, this would work today. So, you know, a lot of these would still work today. But somewhere in here, there is something. Oh, okay. It's not this. This is fine. Uh, this is just covering a, a crate or a, a chest or something with some, with some fabric or wallpaper or something. But on the next page is something truly, truly distressing for me. Um, so here we go. This is a floor model Victrola. And the, the, the introduction reads, An old Victrola will never replace stereo or TV as entertainment, but as a teenage party centre, it's still the cat's pyjamas. Or, in, later, in latter day linguistics, it's really cool. It's not. It's horrible. Look what they've done to it. So this would have been a nice wooden Victrola case, and they've gutted all the all the record playery stuff out of it. They've covered it in fabric. They've painted it, and they've put. And this is the teenage party centre. But if you look at this closely, look, you can see all the little details from the Victrola case that would have been decorative details on that wooden case. Just plop fabric over the top of them. This is distressing to me. There's another one in here that's also equally distressing, but look at this. How 1970s is that? It's upsetting. I mean, you could still do it today. People do do that to old furniture. Um, I, I, I'm not going to be doing that to any old furniture, thank you, but I mean, look at it. Just look at it. And yet, when I was a kid, I thought that would make my birthday parties so cool. But again, very specific supplies. Where am I going to get an upright Victrola, a floor, floor model Victrola, you know. So a crochet rug is still doable and um, people still crochet rugs. This is made out of fabric, rag, rag yarn, if you like. And I have crocheted with rag yarn. I haven't made a rug this size because I'm a very slow crocheter and this would take me about 12 years. This would make a lovely housewarming gift for someone that you don't necessarily want to be invited around to see anymore. This is the agitator from the inside of a top-loading washing machine, which has been painted black with select areas, and that is, I think, how they've phrased it as well. Um, accent certain areas with acrylics. And then what you do is you stick a candle on the top of it, because it's a candle holder sculpture. So if you have someone who keeps inviting you to parties and you're a little tired of it, Take the agitator out of your washing machine and paint it black. I guarantee that will work. I guarantee that will work. This is a boat propeller that you stick to some wood and paint. And then you have a boat propeller in your house that's been stuck to some wood and painted. Congratulations on your art. Um, they do say you can use it as a paperweight if you'd like it to have a purpose. Uh, but I don't think it needs a purpose. I think it's, I think it's perfectly wonderful as it is. Oh, we did make this when I was a kid. We made these as gifts for my grandparents. I'm sure they were delighted. Um, paper mache scenes, basically. Winter scenes inside a big paper mache ball. I don't think I have a photograph of the ones we made. But I definitely remember making them. So they did happen. Not to this size, because this is weather balloon size. That's a weather balloon. And I think we just used party balloons because... Um, quicker, really. Much quicker. Excuse my phone. Now, sometimes you, when you're looking in your kitchen, you'll think to yourself, I have a big empty wall in my kitchen. What am I going to do with my big empty wall in my kitchen? I've got the answer for you. You're going to need a big bit of round wood, quite a lot of white paint, and every utensil you own. And you're going to glue, screw, and bolt these to your big bit of round wood, and then you're going to paint it all white and hang it up. And then you're going to spend the rest of your life dusting it. So that's definitely, I mean, it's, it, you can do it. I'm not, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying maybe have a cup of tea and a think about it before you commit to using all your, all your utensils as white wall decor. I mean, it, it's visually something, and it does remind you that you're in the kitchen. So there is that. So these are fine. These are, I mean, that's two funnels stuck together with a light bulb in them. But other than that, it's fine. That's some cats, cute. But sometimes in your life you need to leave notes for the people that you live with um, so that they know what time you're getting home, reminder to feed the cat, whatever. Uh, so what you could do is put that on the fridge, uh, leave it on the kitchen table, write it on a whiteboard even. If you're, if you're the kind of person that's organised enough to have a whiteboard, well done you. Um, but what you could also do is completely murder a vintage typewriter with enamel paint so that you have somewhere to put your notes for your family. Now, 
two things about this. First of all, that is a lot of bench space to take up just to leave notes for people. And second of all, they have murdered this typewriter. This typewriter will never type again. It is all gummed up with enamel paint. And as somebody who loves a typewriter, I don't currently own one, but I will. Um, this, is, this is as upsetting to me as this. These two projects are distressing. They are distressing. I, I can't look at that anymore. Oh, this is quite a good one, because this one, what you do is you get a rolling trolley and then you take all the shelves out of it and then you put the shelves back in as glass and then you have a rolling trolley. I don't have a bar in my home because um, I don't really drink. So can anyone who does drink tell me, do the shelves need to be glass or could we save quite a lot of time just not doing all that with the shelves and just having a rolling trolley with alcohol on it? These are lampshades made out of the plastic buckets that you get takeaway chicken in. I'm just going to leave that there for you. I'm not. I have no fur, nothing further to say on that. This is a uh, room partition made out of flower pots. I'm not going to say anything about that. If you want to do that, you can do that. I'm not going to tell you not to. If it's what you want, if it's what you feel makes your life complete, by all means. But I am worried about your empty walls. So what I need you to do is to keep all of the lids from anything that you open, spray paint, aerosols, Anything that's got a nice deep plastic lid on it, I want you to keep those lids. I want you to paint them white because what you're going to do with those lids is glue them to a big sheet of slightly transparent plastic. Now, you can hang this in front of a window because the plastic backing is slightly transparent, as I said, so it will light up beautifully. That is what you can do with your lids. You can paint them white and glue them to a big bit of plastic and then hang them from your ceiling. As a child, I really, really wanted to make this. And I've now sitting down and reading the instructions. There aren't any instructions. It's basically build this, use the very specific um, supply of plastic letters from a child's spelling kit, and then just fill it up with little bits of things that you have. So I might still make this. I have a lot of little bits of things. This bottle top ornament is going to ruin Christmas, though. I think it's the colours. The shape's fine, the colours are not. There is one more thing I think that I need to show you because again I'm worried about your empty wall space. And it, yes here it is. And it, so you've, you've filled one wall with your utensils in the kitchen, lovely. you filled maybe the living room wall with your plastic lids glued to more plastic, brilliant, lovely. But what about, maybe you've got a bedroom wall that needs something on it, sort of some visual interest. What you're going to need is quite a lot of carpet scraps for your dust gathering carpentry. So this is going to need vacuuming. I'm not joking. You're going to have to vacuum your wall quite regularly. I don't hate this. I just think it's a little impractical for living with, especially in a kitchen, because there's a lot of stuff in a kitchen. You know, there's grease and stuff in a kitchen. Oh, I don't know how you use your kitchen. I always, I always fling a handful of grease at the wall before I start cooking. I believe that is the worst of the worst. Although these aren't great. These are feed bag pillows. These are going to be hessian or burlap. That's going to be itchy to sit on. But then I get the impression that these are the kind of decorative pillows that you put on the floor when you sit down and then pick up off the floor when you stand up. But that is, I think, possibly the the core of the, of the projects in here that have made me realise that maybe... I mean, these would work if you had a lot of ham tins. Do you eat a lot of ham out of the tin? There you go. Um, so as I said, some of it still works, some of it's still doable, some of it's still viable as projects. Some of it is, I mean, you, you, you know. I mean, I suppose if the piano is really, really cheap and broken, then maybe, but it's a piano. <laughs> oh, there was one more that needed a very specific piece of supplies. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so here it is. I missed it because I was in a rush to get get you to that. So this is an example of the very specific supplies required for some of these projects. For this project you need an old metal hospital bed. Now I don't know about where you live but I passed six just going down to get milk this morning so I should be set to do this. Now obviously this was the 70s, these have not been in use for a long time, much harder to find, you could probably find another kind of bed frame but who looked at this and went yes let's tell people to find an old metal hospital bed. <laughs> And make a couch out of it. So I am just going to flick you back to that because we need to share this again, you and I together. We are now bonded by this experience. 
So even the ones that still work today, stylistically, are a little bit big for my house at the moment. So I can't promise that I won't make a coffee table out of a filing cabinet, but I can't promise that I will. We don't know what the future holds. I will probably revisit this in the future for some of the interesting furnishing ideas, by which time the 70s will be back in style and I will be on trend. Because as you know, I am consistently on trend. <laughs> That's not true. YouTube keeps emailing me and saying, have you tried being on trend? very rude. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a nice time. I hope you're not, you know, too scarred by the Victrola. I'm a little worried about that still. Um, you take care of yourself and I will see you next time. Bye for now.